truth was in his mouth, Aram's mouth, um, and injustice was not found on his lips. And he walked with me in peace and with fairness and turned many away from iniquity. And the Medrash, the, um, the Medrash Rabbah, he elaborates on this and says that what this means, this last point about turning away from iniquity, what that means is that he was a Kiruv worker. Arun was a Kiruv worker. He brought people closer to Hashem. So, you can probably guess where I'm going with this. Um, Rabbi Gonsberg was a Kiruv worker. Um, he brought people closer to Hashem. It was his mission to bring people to Judaism. And not only that, but he sacrificed so much to bring people closer to Judaism. In the time that I knew him, he was always running around. He was never content with where he was. Not content, that's the wrong word. He was never satisfied with the level of good that he had accomplished. He was always striving to do more. After he had opened the Chabad of Harlem, he, uh, he, was working at, he would work on the Chabad, the Chabad Club at City College. And then after that, they, would, they, they opened up a, a preschool. And after that, they would, they would then prepare for any of, the, any of the events or the holidays that came up in Judaism so frequently. He, he sacrificed a lot for the Jews that he came in contact with, for the people he came in contact with. And I'm very privileged to say that I was, I was able to experience that firsthand. One of the reasons that, well, I'll say this, when I first came to Chabad of Harlem, like I said before, I was not at all religious. I came there almost as a fluke. I did no intent. I, I, was in, I was in my last year of university. I was very focused on, on a career. And so in fact, I was, you know, I had like a horse blinders on. It was all I cared about at the time. Uh, to the neglect of every other aspect of my life, spirituality, um, even personal hygiene. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it's a good, it's a good excuse to, to dress up nice once a week and to put on deodorants to go to Chabad of Harlem to, for Friday night services. Um, but I went, when I first went to Chabad of Harlem, um, it was incredible because I walked into this place and it was, I mean, anybody who's ever been to the Chabad of Harlem, it's this completely unassuming little room in a building that is not, it is in this, I don't want to say decrepit, but it's, it, was, um, it, was, it wasn't the most well-maintained well building, but you walk into the Chabad of Harlem, and it's as if you're stepping through a portal to a different universe. You're stepping into this world where there was just smiling faces and people were kind and there was good food thanks to Goldie and all of her amazing efforts um, and then there was spirituality and there was there was, it the Chabad of Harlem it filled it filled a void that so many people have um, in Chutzlach in Golith um, and it filled that void for me and Rabbi Gonsworth he personally took me under his wing and showed me the beauty of something like this, the beauty of Jewish life. Um, and it was impossible to turn away from him after I had been exposed to it. Um, it was impossible not to become closer to Judaism after being exposed to the Judaism that Rabbi Gonsborg showed me. Um, and, uh, you know, through Eventually, I began, I began to, to re, reorganize and pour my priorities in life. He taught me that um, this world is a, te is a test, and that this world is fleeting, and that we need to have a larger picture in mind. And I, I began helping out the Chabad City College. And I remember one time, we were driving back from City College um, with the leftover food, um, which was... Um, and we were we were and we were we were driving back to the Chabad of Harlem after after helping out so many after he helped out so many Jews. I mean, I don't even know how he how he organizes it, but he got he would he would get uh, catered food every week for Chabad of, Chabad of uh, City College, Chabad Club of City College. And we were driving back, and it was like exa exhausting work. You we carry food up, and, and you know I'm a young man. Even for me, it was exhausting, um, and we. Uh, and we were driving back, and I'll always remember Rabbi Gonsberg, he turned to me and he said, Goldman, there's so much to do. There's so much more to do. And he said, and I remember thinking, like, Rabbi, take it easy. <laughs> like, 
I don't know what you have to do, but I gotta, I gotta go home. <laughs> um, but, but that was, but that was how he was. It was like it was never enough. He, he looked all around him, and all he saw was opportunity. He saw people that he could bring closer to God, and he sacrificed. I don't see it as a sacrifice. I, I use that word because it, it's, it relates to my Dvar Torah. But because I think Rabbi Gonsborg, he that's what he thrived off of. He thrived off of seeing people come closer to Judaism. But in a way, he did sacrifice. He, he sacrificed everything for the people he came into contact with. So, I guess, in conclusion, I just want to say,